guys, in today's episode we are going to show you how to use plastic gauge. Now the reason you need to use plastic gauge is because you need to be able to check the clearances for the main bearings and the big end bearings. Now the main bearings are the ones that the crankshaft rotate on the block, they're the ones that you've seen us install already. The big end bearings are the ones that sit at the end of the connecting rod which rotate on that crankshaft. Now if you're building a performance motor, which we are, you need to make sure that you check each and every single bearing clearance. Now if you're building a normal daily type family car, then you could get away with just checking a few of the mains and the big ends, but it doesn't hurt to check them all. The only problem is, because uh, you're not building big power, it takes a lot of time, but you know, some people will argue that you can just get away with doing a few, and other people will say, no, 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 you have to check them all. So you can decide whether you want to do that, whether you've got enough time to do them all. It is quite time consuming. But without further ado guys, let's get into this video to show you how to use Plastic Age. So we're just giving everything a smear of this um, lubricant that comes with the ARP studs. Uh, we'll need a little bit on the inside of the nut here yeah, to go on the thread. Fred. So Reedan has put some um, lubricant on the inside of these nuts. So we should be good to go. That is my name by the way, not Backyard Mechanic. I barely ever say my name in my video, because obviously you don't say your own name. When oh, okay, you... let's not say that, let's forget about the own name. We oh, that's okay. We won't say own name. They can, they can know my name if they want, it doesn't matter. Backyard mechanic. <laughs> well, that should be plural right at the moment. Mechanics, right? yeah, backyard mechanics. Bush mechanics. Bush mechanics. Everyone's a backyard mechanic. <laughs> make, sure your so your, make sure your sockets are clean and not full of shit, sand and old grease and muck. So once we have talked this down, we are going to explain to you how plastic age works, what it's used for, and how to read it. Just want to pull it down gently and gradually. It feels so surreal, Dad. I, I can't believe that it's actually got that in. It's crazy. Yeah, sure. Okay, so the the ARP when you buy the ARP studs for both the main studs and uh, well, actually, I think they'll have the, these recommendation little settings for uh, all studs because I believe you can buy ARP cam cap studs as well. So um, it tells you what the recommended um, foot pounds is or torque setting which is measured in foot pounds right there yep foot pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. so the torque is measured in foot pounds and it gives you a recommended torque setting uh, and it tells us that we need to do 60 foot pounds in three equal graduations so that means the first will be 20 and then it will be 40, then it will be 60. But unfortunately, uh, our torque wrench doesn't go as low as 20, so we're gonna start at 30 right there. No, it does go, it does go to 20. No, oh, it does go to 20. Scratch that, it does go to 20, there you go. So next is 40. So Dad, there isn't a specific pattern that we need to follow for these, is there? No, they've all come down. We're just doing them evenly. Not a cylinder head. Some would argue that it might be important, but yeah, I think you're splitting hairs really. Yeah. But for a cylinder head, you'd you'd definitely want to do it. Well, in that pattern because yeah. you've got a gasket. Yeah, you meant to you meant to torque it in the correct procedure. Yeah. Correct sequence. Yeah. Then the last one is sixty. Oh, 
All right, so without touching the crank, without trying to turn it. And you need you need to not touch the crank because you'll stuff it up. Yeah, you just, yep. So basically, we've just simulated the amount of pressure or uh, foot pounds of torque that is going to be applied for these ARP studs to hold the cradle and the crank in position when the motor is finished. So we needed to be able to simulate that amount of force so that we can uh, compress this plastic gauge, which we'll get to in a moment once this cradle comes off and we'll show you what we're talking about. Just want to gently, gently prise this up. We're trying to not to disturb or alter the readings from the plastic gauge, right? You don't want to move anything. I'm just pulling a piece off the packet. So we've got a metric reading on one side and then we've got an imperial reading on the other side. So we line that up, all those graduations, whether it be green or white, between the greens. So you can see we've got about one and a half. So that plastic gauge has crushed down to about one and a half. There's one, the green one. There's one and a half, the white. There's two, the green one. So it's the white one, one and a half. Yep. If we go up to this one, uh, we've got about the same, one and a half. And these are in thousandths of an inch? Is that yep. right? Yeah. We go back to this one over here in the middle. We've got one and a half, pretty close to it. This one here, near as, yeah, near as a, a fairy fart. Yep. And we can go to this one too. I can see it from here, about one and a half, and this back one's the same. It's a little bit faint to see, but I can see it's one and a half. Now, who says what's the ideal clearance? And, and different engine builders have, different engine build, builders have the clearance that they would prefer. Um, one and a half I think is pretty good. Um, you can't change it, but we, we're, we're essentially we're checking that each journal has the same and correct clearance, which it has. So now that we've done each one, we're happy with that. Yep. Uh, we'll get a clean piece piece of rag and we'll just wipe that bit of plastic gauge off the journal, get rid of that. So what I was saying before about just paying attention, as I've been wiping these there's a little there's a there's a little piece that piece of cotton that's come off the rag sitting down there. Yeah, if, you, if you're a bit slap happy and didn't notice it, you don't want it to be here, that little bit there. So we'll just hook that out. So it's really just going quietly and just paying attention. Yep. Watching what you're doing. Yep. Now that we've checked each journal, main journal with plastic gauge, mm -hmm. we're satisfied that. The clearances are all good. That's oh, that's good. I reckon that's that's ideal. So now we can use some. Um, we haven't checked the end float yet of the crankshaft, but we'll do that in a minute. We couldn't turn the crank before to do that. Uh, I don't think it matters in which order you do it, as long as you do it. We don't have to be shy with this. No reason to be shy with it. A little plastic gauge I haven't quite taken off. So what happens if you don't take that plastic gauge off? Well, it won't hurt. It won't hurt, but having a little bit go down the uh, the hole in the crank doesn't hurt. 
Yep. We did put a smear of oil on the the cap on the bearing shells on the bottom before we put the crank in, so some might say, well, you should have had this on the bottom. Well, it doesn't matter, it's alright. It's all oiled. It's cool. Main thing is never go in dry. Never. Never. Oh, by the way, I did oil. I've smeared oil on the edge of this before I put it on, just so it wasn't dry as it, as it squeezes into its into the block. Alright guys, there you have it. That is how you use Plastic Gauge. If you're watching this video just to get an idea of how to use Plastic Gauge or why we use it or what it is, then I hope you have enjoyed the video and if you have and found it helpful, please don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to my channel for further updates and more information about cars and building motors and all that kind of stuff. Also guys, I wanted to let you know, um, if you wanted to stay ahead of YouTube, um, then go ahead and follow me on either Instagram or add me as a friend on Facebook. I'm going to leave the links up either on this side or on this side. So go check those out. Um, my name is Reed and Arding. There's a photo of me and my dad. Basically, uh, you're going to see everything before YouTube sees it. Now, this video, this photo um, of the motor and a few other things I have already put out on Instagram and Facebook. They've been out for like a couple of weeks. So, I would suggest for you to go and follow me on Instagram or Facebook and that way you're going to stay ahead of YouTube. Uh, so without further ado guys, as always, we will see you on the next one!